Welcome to another edition of From the Perch. I'm Roman from the Orange Bowl Boys podcast and contributor for Kane's Insight. University of Miami versus Bethune-Cookman. You're going to see another post-snap RPO variety that you see week to week with Dan Enos, and it's starting to become very effective, especially for University of Miami quarterback Jaron Williams. As you see him put the ball in the belly to DJ Dallas, you see his vision. He's staring at this area right here, and he's tracking the movement of the safety who's starting to go ahead and trail and come up over the top as a high safety. And when he does that, Jaron Williams astutely picks up that there's going to be an open area. There it is. Look at that throw. Tight window. First down along the goal line. Would lead to Miami's first touchdown. But it's these post-snap RPOs that are becoming a staple in the Dan Enos offense. So one of the things Miami needed to do was taking its shots downfield and improving its protection. Well, one way you can accomplish that, keeping in everybody to block and only sending two into your route concept. Here it is. Play action pass. Jaron Williams is going to go ahead and carry out his fake. You could see some of the blocking that was employed last week with big number 55 coming here. The only people that are going to be out on routes, there's going to be Brevin Jordan coming in on an over route and Mark Pope, who's doing a backside post. And here's what you have. There's the play fake. Here's the dime. Boom. Left it a little bit short. Maybe if it's one yard out in front, it's a touchdown. But definitely a big play that was needed, set up by the fact that the University of Miami Used max protection scheme, kept everyone into block, and it gave them the time needed for the big play. So this is how you build off plays. Earlier in the game, Mark Pope victimized Bethune-Cookman's secondary with a post move for a deep play. On this time, he's going to sell that post once again, but then he's going to hit him on the out. I'll set up the play. Miami's going to once again do a play-action pass. They're going to keep two tight ends into block essentially only throwing two wide receivers into this passing concept. And as the play unfolds, you'll see it happen. There's Mark Pope at the top of the screen, sell the post, and that's all he needs. Jaron Williams now going to go ahead and deliver the ball on the break. Good anticipation. And this is high school wide open alert. Just look at how much space was created. Based on the fact that earlier in the game, he burnt that DB on the post. Now he just sat back on the out. I want to highlight some defensive versatility by defensive end Gregory Russo here. This is going to be a second and 10. You have Gregory Russo lined up as a stand-up rush in here, rush linebacker hybrid role, essentially. Miami's going to be blitzing from the field. Uh, does a good job, but the coverage responsibility, you're going to see him get out into the flat and essentially makes a good play. Keeps that from getting any momentum, keeps it for a negative gain, that's the kind of versatility that maybe, just maybe, gets you more snaps on the field. Nothing fancy about this, just hat-on-hat hat football. Just take a power lead and let's take it for six. But after that first week where left tackle Zion Nelson was highly publicized for some of his, uh, I would say, misses in the game, this was definitely one where he hits. If you watch him right here, Definitely gets a hat on a hat, seals it back inside, and continues to drive. And that just springs DJ Dallas, whose speed is on full effect. Go, DJ. Go, DJ. Go. Boom. So after a turnover late in the second half by Bethune-Cookman, Miami finds itself with 16 seconds in the ball at the 43-yard line. Ultimately, they're going to end up with a touchdown. And it took two high-end caliber throws showing NFL-level arm confidence that gets this done. Let's set up play number one. 
As you see, you have trips to the bottom of the field. Jaron's obviously doing a better job keeping his eyes upfield, downfield, trusting the pocket, trusting it, working his way back up. Great protection by the offensive line. Now watch this throw. Bam. Look at this window. Four defenders, and you would normally think, hey, he's throwing it into tight coverage. Okay, but that was surgical. First down, and follow that up right here. Here's going to be the concept, once again, back to K.J. Osborne. You're going to have a post, Dino on this side post, and this and D. Wiggins is going to run a quarter. He's obviously looking right here. The defense in the back secondary showing cover two. Ball in rhythm, ball in time. Bam. That's how you get two throws, NFL caliber, to get in the end zone when all odds say it wasn't going to happen. That was great quarterbacking, Jaron. Sometimes things don't need to be overly complicated. Just get an athlete the ball in space and he'll take care of the rest. And that's exactly what Mike Carley does here on this pre-snap RPO. Jaron Williams has either the option to go ahead and hand the ball off here, or based on a pre-snap sight adjustment, he's going to make the decision to throw a quick screen out here to Mike Carley, who flashes a lot of speed, and speed kills, baby. Right here, it looks like it's doomed for failure. Turn on the Jets. Harley for six. It would be his first ever touchdown, but it was a good one. A quarterback understanding his numbers and how defenses are trying to play him is going to pay dividends, especially as the season unfolds. Bethune-Cookman's going to combat this 12-set, two-tight end formation really heavy on this side. If you draw a midline down the center, you basically see that four defenders are to the right of the center combating this trip, so they're four on three, and three secondary defenders on this two. But as this play unfolds, you're going to notice right here, we're going to go ahead and have an out right here. At this break, two defenders are now one, leaving a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. I was sitting right behind here live, and I thought he missed this corner out on this break. This could have been a potential for a touchdown. Okay, we'll learn for him. That's what tape is for. But this I do like from Jaron. Extending the play, keeping the eyes upfield, and making a play when it wasn't initially there. Right there, keep the play alive. So even though the good initial read wasn't there, enough presence of mind to extend the play and get a first down. And it wouldn't be a from the perch Bethune-Cookman compilation without this play. Down around the goal line, Jimmy Murphy in. He's going to receive the handoff from Nikosi Perry in battle and gets into the end zone. We're going to keep this film rolling because I think the biggest hit of the game came right here. Boom. Why do you tackle poor Jimmy like that? Little front flip and pump that fist. A remarkable story for Canes fans. Great job, Jimmy Murphy. You deserve that. Oh, yeah.